Good to see everyone this morning. And we are up and running. I'm going to bring up my Facebook here. So I can kind of keep track of people coming on. Good to see everyone. And um, love bless you. This guy right here, I can't get it to change. We'll work on that afterwards. I just know. I Okay. I don't know why it didn't change, but it didn't. I can't stand sitting that low. <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm peeking over the top of the table. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good for eating on. You made it. Good for eating on because you can uh, just shovel it in sitting there. <laughs> How you doing, young man? Good. Good. Good to see you. Not the only one. Yeah, uh, so I'm doing the same thing this morning. <laughs> wearing me a hat. I think I'm wearing mine for a different reason, though. <laughs> I uh, I was doing some things last night, and I spilled some uh, hydrogen peroxide in my hair. And um, so, you know that orange look? <laughs> so I shaved it so it wouldn't do that. So... I don't have an orange look, but I do have a shaved head. <laughs> It'll come back in a week or so. So, uh, everybody, I'll give you your good laugh for the day. Um, so, we are, uh, we've been talking on duality. Um, that's a general term for it. Duality and oneness and um, entering the land entering the Aquarian age. We've been on that for a good long while and how that the Aquarian age, um, it, it's an, the age of apocalypse, it's the age of upheaval, it's the age of change, it's the, I mean, um, it's, um, it's all of those things and a whole lot more. And we see that, you see all the things that are happening and uh, around the world and here in the United States and and um, so we we are constantly looking at that and we kind of want to stay on it so this morning I took a, a, a thought or a title it or gave it a caption and it's face a face-to-face -face encounter um, and I said a couple of things on on Facebook and on Parlor and different places about what's going on um, with the United States and with the rest of the world because as the United States goes the entire world is in fa is affected by it and I said it appears that our political Gemini connection is finished for now um, and our Gemini connection, you know that in the in the age of Aquarius, which is Reuben, Reuben and Benjamin, Reuben protects Benjamin, brings him in, and Benjamin gives Reuben the strength that he needs. And Reuben is Aquarius, and Benjamin is Gemini. So uh, politically, Trump and Mike Pence were both Geminis and then there's a ton of Geminis across the world in a lot of these political leaderships so it appears that our political Gemini connection is finished for now I don't know for how long it might just be a few weeks and might be four years um, but it appears that way in Genesis after the Reuben Benjamin Aquarian Gemini connection there were a lot of changes as Joseph revealed himself. Jacob crossed the veil. The family moved into a new land, Goshen, to live and grow into a nation within a nation. And if the political change is made here and now, 
we are certainly much further along than I anticipated. If we're moving past that, that need in the Aquarian age for that strength, then that, all, that can only mean that the Aquarian age has strengthened itself and doesn't have that need anymore. Um, so we have gone much further than I anticipated, if that's what it is. The strength of us is greater now more so than I thought it was if that's if that's the issue I'm amazed at the understanding and growth of us we are a great nation within a nation just like Israel was and we are moving forward whatever comes there will be many more changes don't uh, don't think well don't get real happy and dance in the streets <laughs> yet because there's going to be many more changes in religion in politics in spirituality in science and the aquarian age those that are moving with the aquarian age are going to move with those changes mm -hmm. we're a great nation within a nation whatever comes there will be many more changes enjoy them and know that it is all for our good pleasure okay. so 2150 years yes for this age i mean that's that's right that's a lot of changes coming <laughs> aquarius is an upheaval of the old systems and i'm sure that it is time this is the aquarian age but it appears that some may settle down in the same old system if given the chance and that appearance is right before us we see them trying to go back to the same old system and uh, then if that happens the chaos will have to occur again you say well uh, why would it do that that's what happened in William Branham's day they went home from the opening of the seals the huge spiritual change took place they went home from the opening of the seals and kept going with the same old system teaching the same old things talking the same old doctrines running the same old churches doing everything when that system spiritually there had been a great change mm -hmm. thus the upheaval that we have went through from the time of the seals till coming into love divine the upheaval for 40 years went on if that's what's going to happen now I'm ready for it I'm, I'm happy and um because I'm not attaching myself to anything. Right. I haven't attached myself to a man. I haven't attached myself to a political system. I haven't attached myself to all these different things. It's all in the Aquarian age. There had to be an upheaval. There had to be chaos. This little space of what I called election happiness is maybe a deep breath of rest and fresh air. Aquarius is 2150 years long. Don't doubt me. There will be major chaos before Aquarius settles into its changes that it will bring. All you have to do is look at the, the planets and what's going on. Saturn joins Uranus, and it's going on now, and brings arbitrary and designate things before its influence wanes out of Aquarius after about 200 years. So Saturn is, has actually more influence than Uranus for a while. And you're talking about a lot of chaos, a lot of war, a lot of changes, a lot of upheaval. So like the song said, we've only just begun. <laughs> and it doesn't matter to me the route that people take I know our vibration I know our push I know who we are I know the way and the flow of the spirit so they can uh, we can kind of do the you know the graph kind of up and down and up and down and fall into things and out of things and into things and out of things mm -hmm. but overall the graph is going to change Right. it's going to change so that's where we're at and um, just 
if it continues on this path for a little while, it could change the whole world. It could change the economics. It could change the uh, political systems. It could change Israel. It could change uh, a lot of things. It would, it would certainly be a different path than I was looking at. But I've told you a million times, I can change just like that. I am, I am attuned to change with the flow of the Holy Spirit, with the flow of what's in me. Now, me personally, there could be a lot of things happening between now and February. Mm -hmm. And let's just keep our eyes open and keep watch. Your individual peace in place. Don't That's look right. Look at the co collective chaos, because no matter how chaotic it gets, your peace within yourself is in your control not the rest of the world's control. Just focus on being at peace within yourself and everything else will be all That's right. right. And stay detached. Yes. Because what comes up may fall off the pedestal within a day, within a week, within a month or whatever. So, and that's with everything. I'm not just talking about political. That's with everything. Mm -hmm. So, because this is Aquarius. T-I-A. <laughs> T-I-A. This is Aquarius. Yeah. I know in the Philippines they, they would tell me T-I-P. You know, we get into all kinds of things and they'd say T-I-P. This is Philippines. <laughs> so this is Aquarius. Now I want to read some scripture because we're going to talk for a little while on face-to-face -face encounters. And I wanted to read this scripture from um, Paul's writings, Corinthians 13. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, Paul's talking about in his day, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. So what's Paul saying here? He's revealing to us that as we move through the pro processes of, we will appear in many different forms. You know, it's processes, and we'll appear in a lot of different forms and in a lot of ways, in many different ways, in order to gain the emotion and the experience that we wanted here to have the good pleasures that we want. We will know in part, that's what he said, and we will become perfect. We will be a child, and we will be a matured adult. We will view things in shadows and in darkness and in the unknown. And we will view one another face to face. And we will know one another as Christ, as we are known. So he goes through many things that we will appear and disappear and reappear and disappear and reappear as. Because all of this is just an appearing. Mm -hmm. We've already, I talked about it, I think last week, and we, we've already created the things we wanted to create, and it's very good. And now, everything that's going on is appearings in the creation to gain our good pleasure and enjoyment and experience and all these things. So, I want to talk about that. We come to a time to where it's a face to face encounter. Revelations 4 and 6. John is talking. He said, And before the throne there was a sea of glass. Now Paul talks about um, now we look through a glass darkly. Now being 2,000 years ago, they were looking through a glass darkly. And then we come face to face, which is, which is where we're at now. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass. So here we have the glass again. Like unto crystal. You know what crystal is. You can see through it. Sea of glass, transparent. You can see through it. It's, uh, 
this is not a glass darkly. And we, when we enter the throne room, become a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So we begin to see everything. Sea of glass, everything's totally crystal to us. We can see through everything. We can see into politics. We can see into religion. We can see into all of those different things and understand it. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Brother Daryl. good to see you. So we see these things going on. Revelations 4 and 6 tells us we are a sea of glass, which is transparent glass like crystal. You can see through it. We can see all things, in other words. Nothing is hidden to our eye. It's an age of apocalypse. It's an age of Aquarius. Nothing is hidden. So then he goes on about this sea of glass, and he says in Revelations 15 and 2, and I saw, as it were, a sea of glass. So here we are again. We come 11 chapters later, and John brings up this sea of glass again. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over its image, over its mark, and over the number of his name, they stand on the sea of glass. They can see everything. They're standing. Everything's transparent to them, having harps of God. They have their song. They have their understanding. They can see through everything. And they are mingled with fire. You know what fire is? Fire is a purging element. So they have come into a sea of glass. They can see everything. We can see everything transparent. We're not looking through a glass darkly anymore. And our view is mingled with fire. Or in other words, we see everything is purged. Mm -hmm. Fire is a purging. Fire gets rid of bacteria. Fire gets rid of germs. Fire gets rid of, gets rid of all these different things. Viruses, you know. They used to burn places down whenever there was a virus because it gets rid of all those things. So everything's mingled with fire with us. So we see ourselves in a transparent manner as a sea of glass, no longer a glass darkly like Paul said they had, no blemishes, mingled with fire, purged clean, no blemishes, no sin, no blood, no spot in us. We are transparent when mingled with fire, the purging has happened and we stand on a sea of glass, perfect with no judgment against us. It's, it's, a, it's a great face-to-face -face encounter. Nothing dark between us now. Face-to-face -face encounter one with another in this sea of glass. Now John goes on in Revelations 21. John brings it up again. And the building of the wall of it, he's talking about the city, and he's, we're not talking about a city like Cincinnati down here with concrete and and glass and all that we're talking about a people we are the building we are the city and the building of the wall of it was of jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass so it's not the kind of gold you think you're you're thinking oh pure gold you know that beautiful gold no pure gold like unto clear glass so the city is transparent glass as you look through it you see everything nothing is hidden anymore everything is exposed everything is brought up and John goes on to say and the 12 gates were 12 pearls every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold listen again as it were transparent glass so it's not the kind of gold you think of. Everybody's saying, I'm going to go to this, this new city and I'm going to walk on, on streets of gold. And every, No, this city is people and a people that have become pure glass, crystal glass, transparent 
We can see through everything. We understand everything. We see the apocalypse going on. We see the mingling of fire. We see, the, we see everything that's happening all around us. And we're the city, the heavenly Jerusalem, that came through a process. The heavenly Jerusalem did come through a process. It started out as the earthly Jerusalem. And then New Testament, the Second Testament, it became the New Jerusalem. And now it's the heavenly Jerusalem. We are perfect, spotless, no blemish. And we are transparent glass. We are looking at one another face-to-face -face encounter mm -hmm. of who we are, mm -hmm. what we are, the age we're in, everything. So we have this face-to-face -face encounter. Now, Paul writes to uh, the Galatians, and he says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child... Differ, differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all now get this right Jacob is heir and, and Josiah is heir to everything that the father has they're heir to it but as long as they are a child they differ no different than a servant the father's telling them, do this, do that, do this, do that. The mother's telling them. They differ no, uh, no more than a servant. Although they be Lord over all. Everything that's his is theirs. Everything that's hers is theirs. So this is what Paul is saying. But they're under tutors and governors. Or they're under laws and regulations. Do this, don't do that. Act this way, act that way. You got to get this done. You got to do this schoolwork. You got to do this. You got to clean the place up. You got to clean the. Got to do all these things. And they're under tutors and governors until the time appointed to the father, until the father sees that they can take over the business, that they have their own mind and their own way, and he doesn't have to tutor and govern them along, the father and the mother. Even so, we, when we were children, notice that's in a past tense, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So the elements of the world, this is what Paul is saying, were tutoring and governing us along. We were in bondage to the elements of the world being tutored and governed along through all the different things that we went through and all the experiences that we gained it has brought us along. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, the Spirit sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. So when the time comes, Paul's saying that the Spirit will move in a way that he will transform us transparent glass transform us into where we're no longer children but we can see one another for who we are because we it's to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons now that makes it sound like we get adopted in as a as a child no the adoption is not that jo Josiah is not his son and so when Josiah gets of age uh, Daryl has to adopt him and then he becomes his son that's not the issue adoption is all about coming to a growth coming to a maturity to where you transform and you are the father and you are running the business he will have his own children one day he'll have all these things and the father will and the mother will have governed him along and tutored him along to where he can raise children he can he, he goes to a job he does all these things and he comes to that to redeem them that were under the law there comes a time josiah wasn't always this little boy this young man he was before he ever came here he was in a position 
of oneness, singleness. He was a theophany, and he gets redeemed from being under that law to become an adult and stand there as a man, as a human, and a theophany, and together those, those things work for him, that we might receive the adoption of sons, not adoption like we think, an adoption from childhood into manhood. That's the adoption. This is and to show you why. And because ye are sons, you get adopted because you're already a son. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be tried and tested and watched. Is he going to get eternal life or not? Is he my son or not? You don't, that's not it. Right. Adoption is, he is my son. He is all these things. And as I watch his mind mature, it's going to come to a point it's not me adopting him and say, okay, now, Joe, you're adopted. No, Joe just transforms himself into manhood. The adoption is a process, is what adoption is all about, from childhood into adulthood. So we've come out of the childhood. He says, he says and because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We have come out of the childhood. We were coming down through the age of childhood, knowing in part, glass darkly, down through the church ages, and now we've moved out of the childhood, out of the church ages, and we've moved into where the glass darkly and the knowing in part and the laws of tutor and governors, and we are standing face to face looking at one another in transparent glass, face to face, the encounter that all the prophets have been talking about is a face to face encounter with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who we were. We didn't know who we were personally and we didn't know who we were collectively. Mm -hmm. And the whole encounter of face to face is to bring us to that point to where we know who we are. The encounter is the recognition of ourselves, one another, as the elements entangled in the great spirit. So we're beginning to recognize ourselves as the great spirit, the elements entangled in, and we're one person. That's what we are. This is the person of Don Parnell. The person of Don Parnell is not on the inside. This is me right here. I am spirit, body, and soul. I am the the spirit, I am the, the elements, and I am the character. I am. It's me. It's the isness of who I am. So we see this. Now, we're standing face to face. The encounter is the recognition of ourselves, one another as the elements entangled in the great spirit. We are now walking in a natural land of enjoyment. We weren't in a natural land before. Now we're walking in a natural land of enjoyment. No matter the terrain of the land, no matter how high mountains get and how low valleys get, no matter the weather, <clears throat> the storms and everything else, no matter all these things, talking spiritually and naturally, no matter, no matter the consciousness, how much you are conscious of what's going on or how little you're conscious of what's going on. That's, that's not what it's about. We are recognizing ourselves. This is the age in Aquarius. The apocalypse is here and everything is exposed and made known. There is not a higher self. I said mountains and valleys don't matter. All these things don't matter. Highs and lows, ups and downs, moods, none of it matters. Whether you live across the tracks and you grew up in a shack with an outside toilet or whether you lived in a mansion and grew up and never knew what it was to have to work for anything, none of that matters. That's just a level of consciousness and consciousness is not what we are talking about. We are talking 
about moving through all of these things and recognizing our selves. This is not a higher self and a lower self. You hear it all the time in the teachings. You've heard us say it, but I've come further than that now. It's not a higher and lower dawn. It's not a it's not a higher self, and that's who I am, and that's who I want to be. And then there's that lower self. There's that there's that fella I don't want to be. That's not what it's about. There's no good self and bad self. There's just self. Mm -hmm. There's oneness, isness, and there's just self. And self is feeling emotional experiences and that's what gives you the ride you are the vibration you are the frequency and you pass through those based on your emotion your feeling your understanding your consciousness and all those things you're the emotion and the feeling when we speak of a higher and lower self we are not looking I'm sorry, when we speak of a higher and lower self, we are looking through a glass darkly. We can't tell exactly who we are. We can't tell exactly who he is. We can't tell exactly who he is. And when he does something bad, I say, oh my goodness, the glass darkly separates. He's a bad man or a good man, or he's both, or he's whatever. You separate yourself, you go back to a glass darkly, you go back to knowing in part when you start doing that to yourself again. We've come out of those beggarly elements like Paul said. Why would you go back and try to perfect yourself in that? Why would you go back and try to perfect yourself with a glass darkly? It's a measurement of childhood qualities when you do that. High and low is a measurement. And it's a measurement of childhood qualities when you do that viewed by the tutors and governors of your life and your tutor and governor is laying in here and you start playing with all the childhood qualities and the no in part the imperfections and everything else when you start separating yourself and saying there's a self over here I like there's a self over here I don't like there's a God over here and a devil over here when you do that to yourself you haven't been fully redeemed you say, oh, Brother Parnell, the blood on the cross redeemed me. <laughs> when you're looking at yourself through a glass darkly, you haven't been redeemed or come back to the original. The original is oneness. The original is singleness. The original is I am. The original is isness. The original is present in the presence the original is moment to moment and you haven't come to that redemption yet you haven't come to that placing back into the original when you're still trying to go by glass darkly knowing in part I got these imperfections I have this sin I got this little problem in my life I got all these things and if you only knew me I don't like that person I want to be a different person grow up <laughs> you can't have a face-to-face -face encounter with this thinking in separation you're still wearing a facade you're putting on you're putting up a mask they like to wear masks today you know I was reading something where it said that a child when they look at adults and other people with masks on a little child can't develop their brain the way it's supposed to develop because they don't see you they don't see all of you they don't see all of your features and it develops in their brain that they don't see a full human being it's a lot of things that we're doing that are affecting us We hear these concepts from great teachers and orators and spokespersons and gurus, whatever you want to call them. New Age movement. I could keep naming them off. These concepts that come from 
Abraham Hicks and Donald Walsh and Eckhart Tolle, and they're all good men. And they brought humanity so much further than where it was. But they still hang on to that duality process. And they tell you, you need to become a higher consciousness. I've told you that. You need to become a higher consciousness. You know what you're saying to yourself? You're saying to yourself, I'm not myself yet. I'm not who I I'm not who I'm supposed to be. And you're separating and you're making me, and then you're making a different me. That's what goes on in people's minds. We hear these concepts of great teachers, orators, spokespersons, and gurus continually talking in a manner of separation of of all those different ways what I am saying is there is no absolutely no and they talk about it all the time that your other self there is no other self I don't care how low a vibration you get into I don't care how high a vibration because you're the one creating your vibration I don't care how high a vibration you're getting into. I don't care about your the frequencies you flow in and all those things. I don't care where you go with it and say, well, I'm this person and this person, this other person of me, I'm trying to get rid of him or I'm trying to relinquish him. You're never going to get rid of him if you're thinking like that. You are the person. There's not two persons. You're the person. What I'm saying is there's no other self. There's only self. There's not another one. And there's not one that's down low and there's not one that's up high. You are self in your consciousness, in your highs, in your lows, in your frequencies, in your vibrations. It's you. Everything else is just processes that you're going through. Feelings and emotions and experiences. Use the processes. There's only one self. Don't try to separate yourself as a person. Use the processes of the tree of good living or the tree of the knowledge. Use the processes, but know that you are not the processes. You are the tree of life. And then the tree of knowledge is all the processes you're putting yourself through to feel the emotion and to become one with your creation. And so use the processes of the tree of good and living, but know that you are the tree of life and there is a difference. They are wrapped up. They are really one tree. I'm not trying to make two. They are one tree, but the difference is one is a process that you're working yourself through and the other is the life that's going through the process. The tree of good living or the tree of knowledge of good and evil is a tree of processes and experiences in time. Time is the tree of knowledge and you go through processes and experiences while the tree of life is you. You. It's not a process. The tree of life is you in time. Or the tree of life is you in processes. You are the life and the light of humanity. You are the tree of life. You are the river of life. You are the throne of life. You are the city of life. You are life going through all sorts of processes that you set up to gain good pleasure in humanity. The concept of duality is not wrong. I'm not sitting here saying, if you've got a concept of duality, you're wrong. Now, I've moved past wrong and right and, and good and bad. And it's not wrong. Du the process of duality has helped many people. Keeps you from having a nervous breakdown because you can blame something on everybody else. <laughs> It helps you in a lot of ways. If you if you can't stand oneness, <laughs> if you can't stand yourself, if you can't love yourself, you better find a duality process somewhere because you're going to go crazy. 
But the tree of good living is a tree of processes. Experiences in time. While the tree of life is you. You are the life and the light of men. You say, oh, no, no, brother. I said Jesus was the life and light of men. Yeah, just go on back there and live 2,000 years ago if you want to. But today, I am the life and the light of men. And you can say the same thing. So we are the life and the light of humanity. The concept of duality is not wrong. Many have bettered themselves by viewing their life through an ego or an egoic of processes. We get in there and we start forming competitions and how good am I and how bad am I and how high a conscience do I have and how low everybody else is and how and on and on and on and with these this egoic attribute within us we take the processes and exacerbate them and try to use them in a manner that that it's not wrong but you're certainly going to go through a whole lot more issues and problems going that path that path of duality However, as Paul said, we have a more excellent way. Cain's sacrifice was not wrong. Oh, we've been preached to that it was wrong. But Paul told us in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, he said that Abel, by faith, had a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You know what that says to me? Cain had an excellent sacrifice. But Abel had a more excellent sacrifice. So there are ways you can go. And Jesus come and brought the sacrifice of fruits right in. He come up to his age and he, he brought Cain's sacrifice right in. He said, by their fruits, you shall know them. Well, that's what Cain brought. Mm -hmm. Cain brought his fruits. And at the time, Abel's sacrifice was accepted because it was more excellent. It was more in line with the flow of what was happening in that day. It was more in line with the revelation of that day. But Jesus comes, and just to make sure that we don't get off on this right and wrong track, Jesus says, by their fruits you shall know them. Well, Cain brought his fruits in, and Jesus says that the fruits are accepted. He said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. I am the, I am the, he, and he goes through all kinds of different things showing that fruits and all these different things are accepted of the Lord. But there is a more excellent way. The concept of duality is not wrong. We have a more excellent way, though. And the more excellent way than this duality process that so, so many continue in, the more excellent way is oneness, isness. It is what it is. Some people, they hate a guy for saying that, but that's what it is. It is what it is. And we understand who we are. It's singleness of heart. It's singleness of vision. We've left the video games with all the illusionary levels. You know how Mario and all of them, you go through this level and you get through this again and you go to the next level and you go to the next level. And we build ourselves to have a duality mind and to have a mind that, that has levels and hierarchies and everything else. And then we have to undo all that whenever we start waking up. So we've left those illusionary levels. Those are in games. Those are not in reality. To continue in that thinking gives you a separate sense of yourself. You see a person that's not you, and you see a person that is you. You see, you say, I have a person inside me and then there's this other person that I don't like very well. No. Inside and outside is you. 
Inside and outside is all the person, self. To continue in that thinking gives you a separate sense of yourself. When you do, when you do that, you are counting the veil as a second person. That's why we get so mixed up. We count this veil as a second person. And then there's this inside guy in there that I don't see, and that's Daniel. But this second person, that, that's a veil, that's a mask, that's, that's not Daniel. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there ain't two people here, and there's not two persons here, and what you're looking at is Don Parnell. And we tried to separate them through the ages. We looked through glasses darkly, and we knew in part We've come to the truth now. We've come to the understanding now. Everything got real transparent now. So it's oneness, it's singleness, and to continue that thinking gives you a separate sense of yourself. When you do that, you're counting the veil as a second person, a second me. I came here, I was me, and I put on another me. And I'm going to wear this other me for 60, 70, 80, 90 years, however long. And then I'm going to throw that other me away like a rag. And it'll go into the tombs and into the graves. No. That's not what happens. The elements are you. You are the person. And you are a spirit. And when you put on those elements, you become one with them. It's who you are. The elements have always been a part of you. You've never had a mix outside of the elements. You've had a lot of different mixes, but never outside of the elements because the elements are eternal. They are one with us, and you may put it in a casket, and you may put it in the ground, or you may cremate it or do whatever you do and throw the ashes out in a river somewhere, and everybody boo-hoo over it and then move on. But that is... The earth is the person and the spirit and that spirit is still here and it's still in a mix, just not in that mix. And when we can understand that, we get away from all this second person and dualities and everything else. We count the second person, the veil, as the second person, a second me. This concept... I'll tell you what it does. It loses responsibility. I'm no longer responsible for myself. That daggone person that wasn't me did it. That one I put on when I come here. That low life that come here by sex. Got, got in here and, and his, his mom was a whore and, and his, his daddy was this and he's a, a murderer from the beginning and he come into the world through sin, through sex, and through ungodliness, and coming into the world speaking lies. It was that guy that did all this. Not me. <laughs> it gives you a loss of responsibility. It gives you a loss of self-empowerment. You got two things in your life that's more powerful than you. And that is this imaginary God floating around out there and this imaginary devil floating around out there. And they both seem to be directing you and you surrender to both depending on exactly how much uh, stamina you have. You surrender to one and say, Oh, I'm sorry I sinned. I'm sorry I sinned. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Oh, yes, this pleasure, it looks so good. I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to do this for a little while, and I'm going to live this way, and I'm going to, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so. All you do is jump back and forth with a loss of responsibility, no self-empowerment, and you lose an understanding of oneself. You lose sight of who you are. So a duality process brought them okay through the church ages, and if you want to live under that, that's totally left up to you, but a Tory 
Don Parnell is gone from there. So you're probably, if you want to live under that duality spirit, and that duality thinking, you might not want to turn me on anymore. You might not want to listen to my broadcast. You might not want to go to the website because everything that I say is going to kick against the pricks of that duality. Not because you're so horrible of a person, but we've moved on from there. We appear in our creation wherein we have a space of time. This is the appearance. We've already created everything. Now we're appearing in our creation. Wherein we have a space of time set up as processes of duality. If you're talking about processes, there is duality. You come through processes from the seed to the harvest. There's duality. The life is traveling through the processes. You come through the pyramid, you move from down there at the bottom of the pyramid, and you move yourself all the way up through the pyramid. As long as you're looking at that as processes and not the life, you've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on because you're moving through processes, the processes of childhood to adulthood, the processes of not knowing to knowing. The processes of all these things is processes, but you are the life. We appear in our creation wherein we have a space of time that we set up as processes of duality. Processes of time is the duality. Processes of time is the duality, not you. You are not the duality. The lower self, the ego, the other me, it doesn't exist. You give it you give it too much credit. You give it your response. You hand your responsibility away to something that don't even exist. You give away your self empowerment to something that's not even there. It's not even in existence. You give it too much credit. You name it God and the devil and demons and good and evil. It's all processes we formed in time to know ourselves. Processes of time that we, the life, are moving through. There's only one life. The life and the light of men. There's only one Zoe. God's own life. There's only one form of life. When you're in the womb, remember what I said, we appear in many ways to go through the process, but we're just one. When you're in the womb, in seed form, in the ignorance of infancy, you use those processes for growth and to maturity. You appear in that manner to gain growth and maturity into adulthood, into a harvest, into a capstone. We appear that way for growth for the pleasure of movement, joy, and understanding. But you yourself are the life moving through that pyramid. You yourself are the life moving through that seed. You yourself are the life moving through that childhood into adulthood. You yourself is not a dual person. You're not in duality. Your processes form you into many different dualities as you move through life. Listen to the Apostle Paul. Because you are sons, the Spirit has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We read that. This reveals to us our tree of life, bringing forth the attribute of sonship in us. It's not a matter of Oh, I slobbered and I screamed and I yelled and I spoke in tongues and I went down by the river and I rolled in the mud and I screamed and I cried and now I'm a son. <laughs> That's not what it's about. There's a process. And you come from womb to be delivered as a person in life. You come from the seed form and come through a process to be matured into the harvest. You come through all of those things 
and we appear that way for our growth. We come through those things for our growth, for the pleasure of movement, joy, and understanding, but the process finishes and you move on. Apostle Paul said, Because ye are sons, the Spirit has sent forth the Son into your hearts. This reveals to us our tree of life, bringing forth the attribute of the tree of knowledge. Sonship is a tree of knowledge. And then look at what the prophet John said. But as many... Now over here, Paul says, Because ye are sons... The Spirit has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. And then look at what John says. But as many as received Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God. Now Paul said you're already sons. Mm -hmm. But John said you become sons. As you receive and as you move. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Might I ask? <laughs> Do you know what the difference is? Simply stated, Paul's statement is life. And John's statement is a process. Moving through a process of sonship. And you are the life moving through the process of sonship. Paul said, For all have sinned. Oh, I get that one. People send that to me. All of you guys say you're sinless. Paul said, we all have sinned. Paul said, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And you take that and you make yourself a sinner. You make yourself a lower person than you are. You make yourself a person who has no consciousness and you surrendered your all because you're such a sinner and had such a life with the devil that you had to die to the devil and all of his things that he is and his demons and all of his temptations and all of his filth and all of his ungodliness. You had to die to all that and surrender yourself and say, I'm a sinner. And I've come short of the glory of God. It's all a mask. It's all a facade. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, let's read another little section of the Bible. And then John said, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. You came from the Spirit and you came here and the seed that you were remained in you and you have never sinned. You cannot sin. What in the world is the difference? That you're a sinner and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and you never sinned and cannot sin. Two prophets. Is one of them false? I ask you, what's the difference in those two statements? Paul's statement here is a process. You all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's a process. And John's statement is life. I cannot sin. I will not sin. There's no way I can sin. The seed remaineth in me, that perfect seed from the beginning, and it'll carry me through a process, and I will be the same perfect person in the end. And the process vanishes and goes away, and I never sinned. It was just a process that I moved through to feel, touch, taste, and see, and have the emotion and experiences of the process. The tree of knowledge is a process of good living. Is what it is. The tree of knowledge is a process of good living. And the tree of life is you. We are encountering now, like never before, the tree of life. 
the dark processes, looking darkly, not knowing, all these things have, have cleared up. And we are transparent glass, crystal glass, perfectly looking through everything, mingled with fire. We come through the judgments and we see everything as clean and pure and holy. The tree of knowledge is a process. The tree of life is you. The more your pyramid thinking, up and down the pyramid. I made it this far this time. Dang, gone it, I fail. I gotta go back and you start over and you work your way. Oh, I fail at this one. Now I made it to the sixth one. God, I'm good now. And down to the bottom you go. <laughs> the more your pyramid thinking, the Piscean vertical thinking dissolves the more you move into the presence of the present. You move into isness. You realize it's who you are. Whatever happens, it's who you are. Now, you may want to move your life further in the process, but it's you. You did it. You walked through it. You acted that way. You talked that way. You are responsible. Self-empower and move yourself further through the process. Come to isness. Come to the presence of the present. Come to singleness. Come to the self-sufficient one. We can't be that in these human bodies. Well, just keep thinking that way. And you never will be. B, come to the self sufficient one self-empowered self-understanding not two cells come to the self sufficient one that you are eternal that you have created all these things and you have moved into these processes that you created as a life form taking on all the appearances of the not knowing and the knowing and the child and the adult and, and all the appearances, taking on all of these appearances to gain the knowledge and the feeling of it and knowing that you have always been in the Spirit, are the Spirit, and knowing that all these things that you're doing is a process and the elements are flowing in the process to bring you into your growth, maturity, and bring humanity into a greater understanding of who you are. The more you move into the presence of present, the isness, singleness, the self-sufficient one, the voices of immaturity, the child, the tutors and governors, they disappear. They stop talking in you. You're a whole person. You are the person. You are the self. You are, there's only one of you. And you come to that understanding and when you do that you begin to lose the voices of childhood and immaturity and and all these tutors and governors that you rolled through you begin to lose all of those voices they disappear the glass darkly goes away the childhood thinking goes away they disappear and when they dis disappear, it makes the glass crystal clear. Mm -hmm. It makes what you see crystal clear. It brings you to a transparency that you have eyes within, eyes before, eyes behind, and you're looking through a glass face-to-face -face encountered with one another and knowing who we are. We're kind of like, I wrote this down. Did you ever take a long trip in a family vehicle with all the children in the car? Did you ever do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> After a while, the voices from the back seat begin to say, what? Well, are we almost there? How much longer? How much? Every five minutes. How much longer? Are we almost there? <laughs> yeah. 
can we stop? I'm tired. You know, every five minutes. If you stop five minutes, every five minutes along the way, you just ain't never going to get there. And you keep, and what, what's your answer back to them? I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that. Please stop. How long, how much longer is it going to be? Are we almost there? And you answer back. You say, the kids say, I, I thought you said it wouldn't take very long. <laughs> that's that, that's that other me talking inside there. How much longer have we got? I can't take much more of this. I'm ready to die. I got, I got to stop. I can't move forward anymore. I got, please, please, how much longer? Please, get us out of this time. Get us out of this vehicle. Get us out of, what's that other me that don't even really exist? And your answer back, you remember sitting in the car? Be still. <laughs> Be quiet. Just enjoy the ride. Look at all the things around you. Look out there. Look at all the stuff that you're missing. The adult voice back. Settle down. Be still. Be quiet. Look what you're missing. You're missing so much. My parents used to tell me, play a game. Look out there and and uh, do, you know, the color game or whatever it is, or do the, uh, I see this and the color is, do something. Go to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> do something. The answer is, just enjoy the ride. Look at all the things around you. It's a beautiful day. Stop worrying about the time and enjoy the ride. We have to talk to the voices of process in the same manner because the voices of process will torment you mm -hmm. and you'll think you are a duality person if you don't give the same message in the same manner be still be quiet we're in this ride time has nothing to do with it it won't be long I've been almost 67 years now and it seems like a breath I look, I think, where did it all go? Mm -hmm. Now, when I was in it, I had those voices a lot of times. How much longer I got to be in this? How much longer I got to, how much, you know, I, I, when I was a little kid, I'd think, you know, when, when can I, when can I do some things without mom and dad telling me? And then when, when can I get my own little job and make, when can I make some money? Because mom and dad's poor and they can't give me none. And when do I get my license? Boy, I can't wait till I get my license. How much longer do I have to wait? I'm getting tired. I want my license. And then, and then it keeps moving right on. I, I want to graduate, and I got graduated, and, and, and it seemed like it take forever. This school, you know, we just keep going back and keep going back and keep going back. When you're in it, the mundaneness of the process talks to you mm -hmm. be an adult and say be quiet be still enjoy the ride look at all the beauty around you this is all you look at all of it around you and steal that voice that doesn't even really exist it's just part of the process talk to it Move past duality. Move past all those things. When you do that and you rid yourself of that pathway of duality, things become so much easier because I don't have to go somewhere and beg and plead to get an answer. The answer's in me. <clears throat> I don't have to go somewhere and, and, and all the time trying to resist the temptation. Temptation is just part of me. I just keep moving on. I talk to it. I quiet myself. I understand myself. You say, well, what is that in me that talks to me, Brother Parnell? And what is this in me that answers back? Because we all do it. 
You'll ride around in the vehicle all day long talking to yourself and answering back. And, and you'll talk about this and you'll say, no, maybe that won't work. And you figure out another way. And then you say, you know, that guy, there, maybe this will work. You're talking to yourself all the time back and forth. What is that that I'm talking to? And what is that that talks to me? And what is that that I answer back to? The beloved, the spirit. It's me talking to me. It's me moving through a process and I'm looking at the process and I'm saying, I think I can make it through this process a little better this way mm -hmm. or a little better that way. Or no, I can't go there. Or yes, I'm going to go here. And it's me, eternal, talking from eternity. And it's me, eternal, talking from time. Mm -hmm. It's not two different me's. It's me talking from time and it's me talking from eternity. They're both the same thing. Mm -hmm. One has just slowed down. And so we have to adjust and maneuver and work and talk to ourselves to get through it all. That's what's happening. That's who we are. We're just one person. I hope, uh, I hope we understand that. I hope I can get you past the duality thinking. You can get past it. You can. You can live a life self-empowered. You can live a life of oneness. You can live a life of isness. You can live a life of moment to moment in the present. Live in the presence of who we are. Face to face encounter. It's going on now. If you look at something or anything any other way than a face to face encounter, transparent, sea of crystal, if you look at it any other way, if you look at it as an enemy, if you look at it as a <clears throat> as a other me, if you look at it as a different self, if you look at it as she's not collectively a part of me, you're going to throw yourself into duality. And going through this life, mm -hmm. it's going to be much harder. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be as enjoyable. <laughs> when you look at it as processes, Tree of knowledge, processes. Tree of life, you. The life coming through those processes. And the tree of knowledge that you set up is you. And the processes are you. But it is temporary things that you set up mm -hmm. for you to appear in as a little child, as a human resource manager, as a construction worker, as a well worker, as a water worker, as a, as a truant officer, whatever you are as a painter, you set up these processes to appear in to get your experience. It's you. The process is as much you as the isness is you. What I'm saying is when that seed is planted into the ground, everything is already in that seed that's going to come forth. And the two blades were a form of the seed. And the stalk were a form of the seed. And the tassel, a form of the seed. And the husk, a form of the seed. And the harvest, back to seed again. All of it was me, but some of the process perishes. Mm -hmm. Where do you get this from, Brother Parnell? Go read Works as Faith Expressed, William Branham. Listen to people on the internet. Pay attention to the life inside you and always take everything you read and everything you see and everything you hear Take it in 
and make it a part of you and there's parts of you that you will set aside and there's parts of you that you will develop and mature in some perishes and some moves on but it's all you William Branham said in works his face express there is a part of me that must perish it's not a different me it's not a other self there is a part of me that must perish and there is a part of me that is eternal and cannot perish I hope you're able to sort those things out I could sit here and just read quote after quote after quote after quote if you want that there Lord there's hundreds of them out there doing it <laughs> I don't do that because I'm bringing the revelation that I have sat down and read that I have been by myself and thought about continually, that I have moved through the process and know by revelation, by experience, and by attributes moving in me, I'm bringing that to you. I'm bringing to you life moment by moment. I'm not bringing to you a quote or a law or a tutor or a governor or a prophet or a priest or a savior or anything else that is just a part of the process. I'm bringing you to a point you can see you. Self wakes up and then it's yours. You don't ever have to listen to me again because it will lead and guide you. It is you coming to a full understanding, to maturity, to a sea of glass. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything to say? That mm -hmm pretty clear a lot of amens well at least we don't die to it three times that's good at least we don't have to die to it three times that's good that's right that's right get him up kill him put him down get him up kill him <laughs> yeah <laughs> so is there anything else anybody wants to say? Well, the process is real when you become a part of it. That's right. And then when the process is finished, if it's a part that you keep and continue on with, it stays with you. When it's done, you just set it aside and the process ends. But while you're in the process, you're not separate from no, it. it is real. It is one with you. It is very, very real until you go through it. And right now with everything so, this world's more divided than it's been since World War II. With this so divided right now, you need to understand the difference between processes and life. That's right. And you need to understand it. If you choose to step out of a process or not connect to a process, you can be in peace. Just because they tell you this is a process you have to go on doesn't mean you have to. It's your choice. Just accept it. That's right. Realize it's all <coughs> part of one, and these processes have to be gone through. Just be at peace. If you think that the process is not you, while you're in it and it's real um, go out in the field where the two blades have come up and the stalk is there and cut down that stalk before it ever gets <coughs> to the tassel to the shuck and to the harvest you're stopping the life also mm -hmm. the process is a part of you now sure the elements, just because you cut the stalk down, those elements just stay as a part of the earth and they change. And the life will go on into something else. But while you are in it, if you try to separate the process from the life, you'll kill it. Mm -hmm. The concept that we have here of dying, you will kill it. Mm -hmm. So... The processes are absolutely a part of you. And while you are in it, it is real. And as you move out of a process into another, you take all that you had in that process with you, and that process perishes. 
but the real you just keeps moving on and on and on. Go ahead, brother Allen. Mm -hmm. seen anything as beautiful as you not talking about something 2,000 years ago but beautiful as you in the moment this is the Christ this is this is all those things this is the Lord God Almighty this is the self-sufficient one there's none beside me and we all have to say the same thing there is none beside me there's not another me none beside me be still and know that i am that's the original version you read it in psalm be still and know that i am god no be still and know that i am no matter what i am you might not look at it as god sometimes you might not look at me as the best thing sometimes you might look at things totally different sometimes but I am be still and know that all of these things are me mm -hmm. and all of these things are you you are the self-sufficient one empower yourself understand yourself in this understanding in this construct in in this unconditional love reach out right now whatever you need collectively it is in the body I'm going to talk on that soon collectively it is in the body reach out touch the energy take it for your healing for your finances for your understanding for your spirituality for everything that you need reach out from the inside and touch it it's yours in the precious name of us Christ we are the Jesus of this day